Good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you may be watching from. Today, we're going to talk about uh, configuring your Kong gateway using DEC, Kong's declarative configuration tool. You might be wondering why you want to do this. After all, using the API or the UI to configure your services and routes and plugins. I mean, it's worked just fine so far. Why change? But how many times have you heard this? What do you mean production's down? It was only a config change. It's easily done and it's not just small companies. Hi, I'm Michael. I'm the Director of Developer Relations at Kong, uh, but that's a reasonably new role for me. My background is in engineering, including some time as an SRE, I uh, was running an operations team. A few years ago, I wrote a book on configuration change management with Ansible from, for Red Hat. And despite that, I've still broken production with a configuration change recently. Let's start by introducing DEC, a configuration management and drift detection tool for Kong. Now, that's a bit of a mouthful. So what does it actually mean? Well, DEC can both export and import your service configuration, providing backups and a way to save your state as a text file. It can run a diff between your proposed configuration and actual config. It can validate a declarative configuration file and automate distributed configuration changes in a CID CD platform. It's also important to note that DEC is 100% open source. It uses the same APIs available to everyone. And you can see its source code on GitHub. That also means that you can contribute. If you have any issues or feature requests, we'd love to hear them. And if you write Go and you want to contribute, we'd love to help you on your journey. You can learn more at github.com slash kong slash deck. Now it's possible to start from scratch with deck, but I'm guessing that most of you already have a gateway instance running. So let's set up a new instance with a single service and plugin so that we have a shared starting point. I'm going to configure a service the points at a demo we built for Summit using the Com Manager UI. So if I go in and add a new service, and we'll just call this demo. And I'm going to point it at summitdemo.com. If you go to any of the demo booths, you'll see that that's the domain that's used. If I create that and then create a root, um, call this sessions. It's a get request to slash sessions. And we do not want to strip the path. Finally, let's add a plugin. Let's add rate limiting, I want to limit by IP and people get uh, one request per minute. This is just a, a starting point so that I can uh, use DEC to dump this configuration to a file and you can see the service, the root and the plugin configured. So if I go back to here, and go into this directory and run deck dump. What this has done is it's generated a file called kong.yaml. And if we open that up, you can see that we've got this services entry for a summit demo. It's got a plugin with a rate limit of one request per minute. It runs on port 443. We've got a get request to slash sessions and we're not stripping the path. This is, these are all the things that I just configured in the UI, but now I've managed to, to back it up in this text file. What we can do is go ahead and call that API. So if I call curl um, 8,000, sessions. The first time I call that, the request will go through fine. But the second, I get rate limited because I added the rate limit plugin. Now, one request per minute is a little bit low. So what we're going to do is go into this declarative config file and make that five requests per minute. And with this change, we can actually use DEC to reapply this config. So if I go back and run deck sync, we can see that 
one entry was updated and we changed five requests per minute, uh, one request per minute to five requests per minute. And if I go back into the, the UI and click in, I can see that that has changed in the UI too. So this has worked uh, pretty well. We made a change to the rate limiting config. We've applied the change with DEC. And we've shown that that change has taken effect in the UI. But being able to manage uh, config declaratively is great. But now you're the only person that can make any changes. Unless you're editing the config file on your machine, there are no guarantees that you have the most recent configuration. And this is where using DEC with CI CD comes in. We can treat a GitHub repo as our source of truth for the gateway config. So let's go ahead and do that. I've got this DEC CI CD repo that I created earlier. There's nothing in here. If I refresh, we're going to do it all from scratch, which means going back to my editor and creating a new GitHub Actions workflow. And I'll just call it push.yaml. The name of this is run deck. We want to run it on push. And we're just going to have one job which runs deck sync. This runs on Ubuntu latest. And it's got a couple of steps. Now, deck isn't installed on the GitHub Actions runners by default. Um, it's not that common uh, a tool that's not like Python or Ruby or anything like that. So we need to install it. And Kong offers a setup, setup deck action to help with that. So we say name setup deck. And we use Kong setup deck at v1. And we also need to tell it which version. So deck version of 1.8.0. That's a good start. We've now got deck on the machine. Um, next up, we need to clone the repo because we need the, the kong.yaml file in the workspace. So oh, what we're going to do here is uses actions checkout at v2. And let's do this, um, name run deck sync. And this is run deck sync. And previously I could just run deck dump deck sync because I had the, the workspace URL saved in my deck config file, but GitHub Actions won't have that. So if I say Kong address and just give it this admin URL, that should be enough to apply any changes. Let's make a change. Let's change that from five to 10 and push that up. Just call it workflow. And then go back to the browser. Now we've got our kong.yaml, 10 requests per minute. We've got the workflow and actions is running. So it's found a runner, it's starting, it's set up deck, it's cloned the repo and deck sync ran and it changed five requests per minute to 10. So perhaps you don't want configuration changes applying directly to production. After all, that's no safer than people making changes on their local machine. Let's add an approval step to our actions workflow that uses deck diff to show what would change and then have someone click a button to say, yes, this is good. I want to apply it. So back to our GitHub repo. I need to create a new environment. I'm just going to call this production. It requires a review for me and save. So now that environment exists, 
I can go back and I can use it in my workflow. Um, so diff deck. So we're going to do exactly the same for the diff job. Set up deck, clone the repo. But instead of deck sync, we're going to run deck diff. What that does is it doesn't make any changes. It just tells you what changes the deck will make when you run deck sync. Next up, we need to make our deck sync step depend on that. So that depends on oh, diff deck. And it runs on the production environment. And that's all it takes. If I go ahead and add those changes. and then go back to the browser, it will run again. So I can go into diff deck, setting up the job, cloning the repo, and it ran, it says deck syncs, that's the name that I gave it, but it actually ran deck diff. We can see that nothing would happen. If we go back to or kong.yaml and change that from 10 back to three. It's not performing as well as we thought. And push that up. We'll see the diff show that we're going from 10 till three requests per minute. There it is, but it hasn't actually made that change. It's just showing what we do. What happens is this deck sync um, job will run and it's waiting for deployment approval. So I need to review the pending deployments. I've looked at diff deck. Yeah, looks good to me and approve. And now GitHub Actions will pick that job up and run deck sync against our production environment. Here it goes, seven seconds, succeeded. And we can see that it went from 10 minutes to three. And if I go back to the UI and refresh, we're back down to three minutes. Now our configuration is in GitHub, it's versioned. We can see who changed it, how they changed it. Um, we can add um, gating approvals, like no more making changes in production, one person on their own. Now you can have change management enforced. Now we've been working with small configuration files so far to show what's possible. And in the real world, it's unlikely to be this straightforward. So let's take a look at a config file that is more representative. It's a, a little bit bigger. And this is a small one. This is a small config file. There's only about six services with a few routes and it's 200 lines long. To help with this, Deck supports distributed configuration and you can manage each service as its own file and Deck will merge them all together. And this means that each team you avoid can manage their own configuration. So if I go back and teams, we can have the product team managing the product service and the sessions team managing the session service, each with their own rate limiting and things like that. You run it with deck sync, teams, so deck sync, products, sessions. And we can see that's made all the changes. And if I hop back over, we can see demo and demo products. This is awesome for real team ownership of how their services get into production. And finally, I want to show you just how easy it is to get started with Kong. Three minutes left. We're going to provision a new EC2 instance in AWS with Pulumi, install Kong with Ansible, and configure all the services with DEC. So let's do it. So Plume up. Oh. Oh. 
I forgot to pass in which stack. So we're going to do it live. See, it doesn't exist. Yes, we want to create it. So Plumi is a, a great tool for declaratively creating infrastructure. Um, I will show you the, the config that I'm using in just a second. I just need to say, yes, I want that. And whilst that's running, let's take a look. My definition is written in TypeScript. I want to create an Ubuntu ET, EC2 instance, a new security group, ports 8000 and 8001 open to the world. Again, don't do it in production, but for demo purposes, it's okay. I want to create a new server in that security group and return the public IP and host name. 50 lines, new EC2 instance. That's running, that's creating. Okay, so next up, Ansible. I've got an Ansible playbook. Um, let's run that. So Ansible playbook. And what this does is it installs com gateway, Postgres, uh, configures everything that we need. And it just does all of that in the background. Um, let's take a look at the, the playbook for this as well. Let's close that. Ansible playbook. So we add the Kong repo. Uh, it's an apt repo because we're using Ubuntu. Install packages, create the database, create the database user, copy the config file, bootstrap, and then restart Kong. 40 lines, declarative. Here we go, run migrations. And I'm just going to grab this because I'm going to call that in a second. Everything went fine. So curl for 8,000. Kong is running, nothing with sessions. Excellent. And Dexy CD. So now Dex sync, Kong address 8,001. Dex sync created my service, my demo, um, my roots. And if I curl, there it is. We just created a new EC2 instance, provisioned a gateway with Ansible and synced everything from our declarative config with DEC in less than four minutes. One last thing, DEC also works with ConConnect, our hosted control plane solution. All the demos today have used the on-prem gateway, uh, but you can use DEC Connect Sync to manage services within Connect2. In fact, migrating from on-prem to Connect can be done with DEC in just 60 seconds which is pretty awesome, don't you think? And with that, it brings us to the end of the session. 20 minutes, introduced deck and provisioned it all manually by hand.